Okay, now the recording started. We can start. Who wants to go? If the question is not clear, it's just for me to understand how you feel about past week. <clears throat> I know that in the stand-up, you probably already said that, but I was not there, sorry. So what you felt about last week, your achievement, you know, the challenge, uh, the feeling, part of it, and then your readiness for this week. And if you have read the challenge document, I think you should have, um, and how you feel about it. You know, I'm going to, in any way, I'm going to be then naming names. Okay, Rudolf, you can go. Next is Binyam Ajao. And then next is uh, <clears throat> Yasu Wanderson. So, okay, uh, Rudolf. Okay, good morning, Yabeba. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, last week uh, was a very challenging for all of us, but I mean, I'm talking about myself now, so it is very challenging for me. <laughs> and uh, it was a kind of stressful. I was a little bit stressed because of the challenges I was facing, technical challenges and uh, time consuming that I was facing. It's a little bit stressed because I keep in my mind that I want to finish all the tasks. And when you see yourself not uh, moving on to finish uh, your task, it is, it is stressful. So I feel that. And as I was saying earlier in the last uh, meeting, uh, I noticed that I have a, a problem of time management. And uh, I start asking my, my peers, how are they uh, managing their time to, to, comp to perform all the tasks? And maybe uh, some of the answer may help me. And uh, for this week, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready uh, to find a, a way and better way to to improve again and again. And the result shall be. By the way, Yabeba, I will also ask you if you were in your shoes right now, how will be your strategy to to perform very well? Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> very good uh, and very reflective. I like that kind of reflection. Uh, thanks, uh, Rudolf. And it was trustful, absolutely. And but the thing is, it will go right. It's like just the work will be done. That's last week. Whatever learned, learned. Whatever was a mistake was done and will be improved this week. And the same is for from this week to the next week. And it's a lot of exposure, a lot of mindset changing and time management. So, you know, you have to know we're not giving you a toy problem. That means just something that we know. So I will be struggling too, uh, maybe with just different struggle um, that experience might help sometimes. But um, I would say, I think the first thing I would do is almost always this week, I would exactly what you have done, Rudolf, I would take look, a look back last week and see what was something that was really frustrating me or challenging me and that i should not repeat so in a scrum um, an agile framework you could you should only consider you know all of the things from last week and choose one priority one thing that you want to improve so that's called a process one process not even a thing but it must be a process so last week if your approach was you didn't write the to-do list every day or you didn't plan for the week, maybe that's a process you want to change this week. But almost always acknowledge one thing that was good from last week. You know, just identify things that were good, but then prioritize what was really, really good. Like, you know, from all the goods, what was really good about, and there must be one. You must know there must be one. And, and if you can't find something good from last week, search hard. There was something. One thing I can tell you is that you persisted, right? So you submitted. Those are at least good things, right? So find one that was, a, again, a process, not just some one thing. It, if it was a process, it was nice. It was like the mindset, your, your mindset preparation. Or maybe that one process from last week is that you dedicated all your time. 
you know, or you probably ask it like you had, you were asking lots of people. So those are kind of, you know, things, good things you, you can identify. Almost always never identify your weakness without identifying your strengths. That's basically, there's no good in it. By identifying only what was not good, you, you, can't, you can't improve. So you must identify, normally my formula is five to one. So you must identify five things good for every one weakness because there must have been. Force yourself. This is for everyone. Really force yourself to identify your good thing. Just don't focus only on the weaknesses uh, aspect. Because even if you didn't submit much or you didn't do as much, but there was something you were doing that really made you, led you today. So whatever process in your life that led you today, you must respect it, honor it, acknowledge it, and the good part of it continue. Then from that on, identify the weak part of it that you should be improving. So Rudolf, that would be my strategy. Thank you, Abiba, for your contribution. I really appreciate that. Okay, great. Biniam, Biniam Ajam, just tell me one, and then we would go to what was, uh, I think Wasson as the next one. So Biniam. If you are unable to, you know, like the one part I cannot tolerate, if you are unable to talk, type it. If you can, please say it, but there is no in between. There is no, just because we are online, doesn't mean you have the right to not say anything. So acknowledge it. And, you know, sometimes of course you might be just going to the toilet and you didn't hear me, I understand that, but, um, just that was that is you know because we are we are all now on the journey to uh, enterprise culture in an enterprise culture there is something's intolerable and that's just because it's online you could because you can say you can be silent that you say silent so I assume now Biniama Jao is not there uh, so let's go uh, what was the name that I mentioned I think was I was in... yes sorry yeah thanks yes. Go on. Go on, Yasu. If you are speaking, then we can't hear you, unfortunately. We, st we still can't hear you, Yasu. So maybe you can type. Okay, yeah, it's good. Uh, okay, so Abraham. Hi, team. Hi. Uh, so I have a question regarding the week one uh, project. Yeah. So how connected uh, each week project is? I mean, uh, uh, for me, uh, I haven't completed some of uh, uh, the, pro the tasks. And uh, should I take some time, you know, uh, on this week to complete? Uh, it or no, just completely no. leave it as it is and work on leave it, the... leave it as it is it's um you know work as we go right so last week was last week so many things overlap because it's a technical thing you still have to work on postgres this week you still have to but it's not about last week that was you know in an industrial sense you delivered whatever you managed and then you are now assigned to a new task so you you do a new task that pass that train, you know, next time at one point, maybe after the training, when you have a chance, you will do it. You no, know? that's it. And I think the 12th week, usually we do it, you choose one project to improve. So like on the 12th week, you can, of all the weeks that you didn't do well or you wanted to really do well, you can choose that one to improve, uh, to put it in your CV. But for now, you know, things are connected, you know, we you're all programming Python and JavaScript and SQL in all of the 12 weeks. So by that already it's connected, right? So in that, in that part, you know, it's all connected, but the tools that you may use might be connected. Some of them overlap, some of them, they might, they might not, but the mentality. So the three things that really overlap are the statistical understanding. So we call them competency. 
So the co by competency, they are all related, right? You are the professionalism, the que asking question, the discipline, the hunger, the writing very, very good code, very good code in Python, front end, back end, as well as, um, you know, uh, MLOps and DevOps. That's the kind of connected in that way. So they're all adding on top of, you know, what the different tasks will add on top of that. So by the end, you will feel you can, yeah, I mean, they're going to be very, uh, if they don't hire you, it's their fault. You know? It's not your fault because you're, you, you can offer so much stuff, right? Okay, so is that clear? Does I make yeah, it yeah. very clear? Yeah, it's yeah, like, thank you. don't worry about the past week, just only about this week and next week about next week and just proceed um, and do the best you can. Okay, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry for my uh, mic. Uh, okay, so I will continue. Uh, my week one was better than uh, week zero uh, because uh, I learned uh, something. This example, you know, I understand even what idea was uh, in Thursday in week zero. So uh, I was late to do my tasks, to finish my tasks. But uh, in week one, you know, I started working on tasks from Monday and I try to finish uh, everyday task. Example, I, I try to finish Monday task on Monday, Tuesday task on Tuesday as much as possible. So, you know, uh, so that was better for my side. Uh, but what was challenging for me was there are like, I think, four reports or like slides that uh, we need to submit. And, you know, I was told they, they will not take uh, a lot of time. So some I, I did some I, I did some of them on, uh, on uh, uh, on the last day, on the submitting day. You know, they, uh, and they took me a lot of time, so I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't submit them on time. So you know, I, I will, I will, I will learn from that, and I will finish uh, the reports or the non-technical uh, parts earlier. So, uh, but uh, as a general, week one was better uh, for me. I think. Thanks. Thanks. Yes. Very good reflection as well. I think I like that. I mean, when I hear you, you are connecting dots. That's, you know, that's also Steve Jobs said, right? It's all about connecting dots, you know, building dots first and then connecting dots. So building dots is one that you have to have many dots to connect, but then connecting them is the, so in that process of thinking is exactly, you know, really I like. So, Thank you all for contributing on this, uh, on making me understand what, um, you know, how generally people are feeling. Now we proceed to week two challenge uh, walkthrough. And again, for that, how many people have uh, looked at it? So now just let's only refer about the week challenge. So, Magdas. Like this, you can go. Okay, okay, like this. So, anyone else wants to go to reflect? Alexander, Mangesha? Alexander, if your mic works you may sorry sorry yeah now we can hear good morning you. morning uh personally i appreciate the idea of ensuring that uh, new achieved uh improvement and work to the weakness that goes uh, sarah uh, personally i in myself i improved from uh, week zero uh, to week one and going with new energy uh, for week two in week zero uh, there is a drawback of time management in 
doing the assignments uh, before uh, reading much more resources and practicing. So that uh, makes me in accomplish the assignment on time. Uh, because when I do the assignments, there is a uh, concept and understanding. So uh, I improved from week zero to week one. For week one, I do more reading and practice, practice. And then I start to my project. So I improved by time management and coding style for week one. Uh, I will continue this week with refresh mind and energy. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Alexander. Thanks. Uh, but who has looked at the week two challenge and who can summarize it for me? Okay, Nasrella. Nasrella. Sorry, just you, you also have to help me sometimes if I mispronounce your name. You did indeed mispronounce it. It's Nasrella. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, um, based on the first reading of my first understanding, I or in the business understand from this week is actually uh, uh, data engineering and data where, warehouse. So we've been asked, assuming that we are a startups, uh, data-driven startups, um, and our, some of our main job consists of uh, collecting data and building warehouses. Uh, we've been reached out to, we have been reached we try data driven and uh, more to track cars the traffic system so that's the uh, task so it's driven actually the data is as uh, some massive collection of uh, vehicles of uh, movement gathered uh, using drones and street camera and each, each uh, data file for a specific time, actually, is around 87 megabyte, and as I stated. And our task consists of uh, two things, or two main important things. And first is to build or design the data vault, or the data storage, uh, for all of the traffic data in the city, and run different analysis on it. And the other, uh, the other task is actually the day, the vault must be flexible in a way that it could be adaptable for future use, uh, not related to analyzing the traffic, uh, the traffic crowdness and other things. But uh, the city want to use it for an, for other or other important analysis they might need it. So how we will do that is actually uh, it's based on what I based on the documentations. They, we've been asked to use a special techniques called ELT, uh, which is stand for extract, load, and transfer. So how I understand ELT is that uh, extract and loading is actually how we prepare the data, and transfer is and, and transfer is based on how we're going to use that data or this data driven for future use or for specific need. Um, we've been asked to, uh, we have, so that's overall of the project. It's actually assuming that, to summarize it up, um, we assume that we are a data-driven startups. So due to our expertise, we've been reached out by the city traffic. And the city traffic want us to build a design vault. That design vault actually going contain every traffics or every traffics that have been around the city, city uh, streets and, and cars and bikes and everything else. Then while we, and we will start it to the data vault, but while we're doing the process, which is the main, for I believe the main focus of this week is actually how we build that data pipelines and how that data could be, or how that data vault could be flexible for future use. So that's overall of, the 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 project based on the okay so I, now i can go right because that's very very good and detailed summary and accurate summary thanks nasrallah so um but still she might be some people might be understanding it differently and that's all good because you have to understand it three different ways of the same thing to actually understand it so I want different perspective, same thing, but different perspectives. Uh, Yaya, do you want to go as well? 
Uh, yeah, uh, I was gonna go first, but uh, <laughs> Nasrallah already explained the, the documentation, so I will just uh, ask my concerns. Uh, except my SQL, I never heard about, I mean, I, I heard about DBT and Airflow, but I never tried them before. So which one do I study first? for this project and then what next that, that that's just a concern of mine thank you I mean, they they serve different purposes right so as a, like dbt is just another form of uh, automating like some kind of business intelligence in a very convenient way you know so it's basically it's on top of a database so the, the database you can use, I think I'm just going to check. I don't know if you can see my screen share. Do you see my screen share or do you see a black screen? Oh, we can we can see it. Okay. So yeah. I think we say my square, but just you can also use if you want. Actually, you can use also for screen, the one following before. So that's going to be your database, but the database uh, for your, they are called data marts or like, you know, and and then the part the part you would do for example the, the actual metadata that you are going to extract you can put it in data lake just means any folder you know for now if you just put it in your computer your computer where you put the folder can be that can be considered of course that's not what data lake is there is a certain metadata around it but let's imagine for now that's your data lake and then a mysql postgre would act as your basically data warehouse um, and dbt is for transformation so in elt framework like you you have to do for different asks like in a dashboard when you do something it has to be done the transformation on the, on top of the the database so it's not just only query but it's it can be just a simple query but it you can do even many transformations using dbt and Airflow is basically managing the scheduling, right? So that's basically an orchestration and scheduling component. So they are all, you know, tools. Tools, you just use them whenever they are needed. So it's not about studying and whatever, but just, you know, Airflow has, it just comes with everything um, th that you can schedule. Airflow is, an, you know, the, the kind of crone, if you have used crone before, just to run something on time, on schedule. Airflow is just one of that. It can do more, but it's also just you can use it for for that. DBT is for transformation on top of a database, a data warehouse, and MySQL and Postgres acts as your data warehouse. And then your computer folder where you put the actual original data is a, acts as like your data lake. And then of course, the extraction component that if you write it in, in a pipeline way, as Nasrallah was saying, you know, that basically acts as your pipeline, as extraction pipeline. So I think it's everything, you know, it's not the choice of this or that. Um, you just attempt everything in order and in, in whatever you manage to do. So it's not like choosing one. But if you are saying order, of course, first is getting the data, understanding the data always comes that one comes while in parallel you can be planning okay you know should i maybe adding um if you have already the database creating a new database with a new own postgres or mysql and then adding the data that that part and then maybe just on top of that you are learning and understanding airflow you can start installing airflow and seeing reading about it and then uh, after that you know you try dbt because once you have um the database, the data warehouse, then you can start uh, DBT. And then you manage all of them accordingly. Does that make sense, Yaya? Yes, thank you. That's good. You're welcome. Um, but I want still another person to rephrase in their own way their understanding of the project and where they don't understand and where they understand clearly and where they have concern. So I always need three people to say it in their version. So who else can go after Nasrallah? And yeah, yeah. It's attempt, you know, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to be correct. It's the whole point is just, this is 
for for me to to get the chance to see how much people understand so you have to be feel free if, even if you skimmed through and you didn't understand much and you want to just say it it's fine you know it's not i'm not asking uh, i mean nasrada probably gave a much more detail um and i don't expect that if you just want to go also very light it's fine let's just make it interactive make me not mention names better if it's voluntary based So, I mean, my question first and I, on the challenge document, Aaron, we will, I will go through again, but the part is I want people to tell me that what they understand by the challenge before even going and downloading data and doing that. Just do we have, are we in the same page? Okay, Abdul Hamid. Yeah. Okay. So here is my understanding. I may be incorrect, but I'm just. It's fine. As I said, that's all good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So from what I understand is there is a city department that wants to uh, store traffic uh, information, and that traffic information is uh, to be collected by a swarm of drones. So uh, we are tasked on building a scalable data warehouse in which. Uh, that data is to be uh, stored in the data warehouse and accessible for any future needs. That's what I understand. Yeah, it's good. It's it's already the data is collected um, and the data, of course, is provided. A link is provided to download the data. And that data comes from uh, Athens in Greek, actually, so that you, we would use it to as a way of like, okay, you know, wherever, even if it's like, in Nairobi or Addis Ababa or Lagos, we will be using similar techniques so that the traffic department basically is gonna be doing something similar. So they want, they probably would operate or they hire some other startup um, that does drone um, swarm op uh, down, um, operation. And then from that data, it will be collected and your task is basically to be able to down, you know, to build a data warehouse that hosts that on top of that, Nasrallah also didn't mention it. For example, the, the other very big component is building dashboards using Redash. And why Redash? You will know. Redash has a very, very, very nice way of visualizing, creating very um, dynamic visualizations, just using only SQL. So that, that part also is a second component. OK, thanks, Abdulami. Thanks, Yaya. Thanks, Nasrallah. But I want another person. Who's going to go next? OK, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I try to understand uh, the, the projects, which projects, but in general, uh, in general, the startup helps organization to obtain crypto intelligence. What I mean, the startup is responsible for creating scalable data warehouse that stores the vehicle data or vehicle data, trajectory data extracted from uh, drone and roadside camera. The data warehouse needs to consider future needs, uh, ensure uh, efficient querying by downstream projects. Uh, the uh, ALT framework using DBT is, is to set up transformation workflow as needed by analytic engineers in the traffic department. The, the data warehouse also uh, enables easy management and analysis from the data uh, to proceed this. We must do ALDT framework with DBT, that means data extraction and loading the data. After that, we transform. That, that means uh, we need cleans, validate and transform uh, the data. Uh, all about uh, this I realized from the challenge document. Yep, thanks, Aaron. That was accurate as well. Um, exactly that, right? So, yeah, thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Uh, do we have Rudolf? Like, do you want to add more? Rudolf, I saw your hand. 
Now, uh, oh, yeah, Baba, I do not have uh, more to add. Um, basically, uh, I think what I understand is uh, we are supposed to to think as a, we are a startup that has the, the uh, responsibility to to create a data house uh, in order to to host the vehicle trajectory data that I extract from uh, our analysis. And the data, uh, the data is uh, collected from a drone, uh, a given company drones. So basically this is uh, the general idea I have. Uh, so far, you know, I have never worked on uh, data, uh, data high house and but I think uh, these, uh, this week will give me this opportunity to go through and understand and do something. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, yeah. Great, I think, you know, so ultimately, every Monday by the end of this session, don't leave if you don't understand correctly your the project, because then it will cost you a lot of time trying to understand it otherwise. So that's the whole point. And that's not only for this, but every time you are in a project, don't leave any stone unturned until you understand something, right? Because then once you understand it, that's it, you know, you understand it, okay, it's the challenge of something else, that's, that's fine. Right? But don't leave without understanding. That mentality of really what you're going to do, what the boss or, you know, your CEO or whoever, team lead is planning to do you must understand it right so that part must be very super super clear we're going to repeat it 12 times so hopefully by then you're so expert in that you you make sure that by monday you have a very you are on the same on you know on the same page as the basically whoever designs the task right so and then from that on let your challenge begin so that means don't leave this session without really understanding the the what is asked and how things are supposed to go. At least you should be able to describe that to your friend um, accurately. Okay, so let's begin, right? I think it's already, uh, everybody already said it and it's very clear. I think it's accurate. Most people's assessment and understanding is exactly the case. You know, the story gives you that part, what, you know, all of this that you can translate it after the training, you can translate it into your AI, your, your business as well. You know, this is really a biz, you know, a project that actually people are working on and that maybe is not in your city already, maybe, and you might be the first working on this area and the data is very uh, novel data, right? So that comes from, um, like, I think it's EPFL, uh, uh, Switzerland University projects that they have been doing. And so there are, so this is a very realistic case. It's not uh, downgraded, you know, the data is also slightly raw. And every, if a traffic department actually, you know, buys those UAVs or something, the data they're gonna generate will be something similar. Of course, the labeling part, they have to buy also another software probably to label that. But the output of that is what you get. So it's as raw as possible, right? Okay. So the case is exactly that. And the story is that you and your friends are in a, building a startup and commissioned to work to help the traffic department uh, on this. And the data warehouse, I think uh, Nasrallah just extended it a little bit more. I think it's okay to think of only the traffic type of data, such type of data, but for future needs, such as you might want to, it's called uh, triangulation. You might want to triangulate that data with, for example, traffic accident data, right? So, or you might be triangulating that with another type of data that is collected from smoke detectors, right? Or you might triangulate that data with actually uh, some satellite data that actually gives you some form of, or Google traffic data, right? So that's called downstream projects as well as also you might really want us like somebody that a researcher might come and want to understand noise issues in the city so they want to use that so for all those things it should be structured 
nicely. That means that it should be queryable, it should be fast to query, it should have a very simple data structure that it exposes itself, it should have metadata, things like that, more than the data warehouse to be for everything to host other data. So for now, just think of it data warehouse for traffic or to manage traffic data uh, or a city department data, but a lot more on road up around that. And it should be just that that is sufficient. But if you can do it more such that you also dictate what, what type of uh, framework you use, for example, there will be a tutorial on Kedro. So adopting Kedro structure. So the Kedro structure is a data warehouse, data lake structure. And so all of that practices are good if you can do it, but um, that that's the case. Okay. So we ask you to do ELT framework because you, you load once and you transfer many times. And that is the latest kind of, let's say the modern way of doing a uh, data warehouse. And because of frameworks like DBT, that is possible now that on, on the database and also the databases, data warehouse have become so cheap, compute becomes so cheap. So basically, you know, you, you have that. ETL, you have to understand where also ETL, most of the times we do actual ETL, we just extract, transform and load, and we put it into a business, business intelligence dashboard. You know, that's also fine, but um, this one is the modern way of doing it. And the data is just this one, so I think it's, I'm going to, maybe I have to um, stop this one and share more my whole window so that you can. So hopefully you see my screen again, right? So if you go to the data where you can extract the data, just let's wait. Sorry, Abby, we can't yeah. see the screen. As you can't see my screen. No, nope. now it's a document. So yeah, as long as you see, like, do you see now my document? The document I'm showing? Yes. Okay, so yeah. then, yeah, I am waiting for this part to load. I think somehow my internet connection is slower today. So. Sorry, while it's loading, so we will talk about the data. And so there are, these are basically what is called, so the drones measure or take like a high resolution data uh, because they also measure different timestamps. So basically they are able to extract the kind of the traffic or, or the, the, the routes of cars and the trajectories of half a million vehicles that have been collected by this um, really one of a kind. It's really one of the very, very uh, rich data set. And so that one, and so the data would come hopefully. And again, if you wanna understand, yeah, apologies for my connection. Should have opened it before. Okay, let it load. So, and these are, you can understand more about video frames, how from, from the drones it got actually converted into um, this trajectory data, right? So, um, we will come back to it. So, and then there are also other, already there are many, but you can actually also use uh, some of these Git packages that are actually working. Again, if it works, let me check. If this one works. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the data is this one. So you see my my screen, right? So yes. the yes. yeah. So this is basically you can get a lot about uh, from the about page. You would get a little bit about um, what it is the project, and then from the FAQs you can get more uh, what it is. So. So this is the about page. It's basically sharing the big data and a swarm of 10 draws hovering over the central business district of Athens over multiple days to recur traffic streams in a congested area of 1.3 kilometer square area with more than 100 kilometer lengths of road network, right? Around 100 busy intersections, uh, signalized or not, many bus stops and close to half a million trajectories. So that's the data. So um, in the downloads, you basically get the different dates, different location. So these are the locations <clears throat> in the map. And then here are the locations um, part. So you can select, basically, if I select a few more, for example, I can select this is a kind of a checkbox or so maybe the old ones I can select. So that basically means all, or I can select a few of them. And then I can select the date that I want. So it's again, I think all time it's possible, but for now, let's say one of them. And then time you can either select, okay, so it's only allowing you to select um, one by one, right? Just the time part. So for this date, all of those locations, you know, between 10, 30 and 11. So this, this is a metadata for you as well, because you know, if you want to understand how in time it changes in you know the traffic volume whatever this this data is already useful and then when you then click i have read and understood you can download and i think this this way you will be able to download all the data and so you can you can get a lot of answer about uh so for example about each csv file each row represents the data of a single vehicle so that means from that video they have already extracted for you the different cars they have identified using image segmentation you know identified one car and then its trajectory right so each row represents the data of a single vehicle so not just an image and the first 10 columns in the first row include the column names and then the first four columns include information about the trajectory like the unique track id so later whenever you are trying to really relate the trajectory reconstruct the trajectory understand where this car goes how long it took this car to go from this point to another point all of that you might you you will need to know about the actual every track id that means the identification and then the type of vehicle as well so that also tells you including just by analyzing only the type of vehicle you can see from the sample, what are the common cars? Just like the common handsets, you can actually do that. And then the distance traveled in meters and the average speed of the vehicle. And, and the last six columns are then repeated every six columns based on the time frequency. For example, column five contains that latitude and vehicle at time column 10. So that means, you know, the longitude and the latitude of the vehicle at some time. And that time is given on column 10. And column 11 contains latitude of the vehicle at time column 16. So that, that that part is already, you know, this is, and the speed is in kilometer per hour, longitude and latitude are in uh, meter per second square and in time in seconds, right? So this is basically how many types of vehicles are there. So this is just a simple EDA that they have done themselves, car and taxi. So this is exactly one of the things that we ask you, but you can get it also from FAQ. But I want you to extract because to write some function that actually gives that from this. Medium vehicles, the dimension of the different types of vehicles are given below in meters. So this already helps you the volume uh, analysis, you know, how many cars are on the road and how many, the, you know, what is the road size? If you wanna actually recalculate the road size by looking at the very similar longitude and latitude, what are in how many cars and at that exactly the same date and same time, you can actually then the, the car volume for each of them uh, will tell you. And so the basically the heavy vehicles are larger, buses are much more larger. Of course, the lengths are much more uh, larger, motorbikes are that. 
and you know so many of them this would help you to understand already just um you know uh, this information is already given here and if you want to do a lot more a complete methodology to extract lane wise information is described on this paper um, and you can click and get it so that one if you want to understand how they recompute and why is the data frequency not always equal to 0, 0.0 seconds you know you can get again from that information one of the drones um instead of 25 frame per second recorded the traffic streams in 23.97 frame per second so that's basically the drone had a different design maybe and that it recorded uh, that so that's the reason so basically i'm just going through so that for you to explore the data understanding right and so this part for example this was two years ago you can actually look at others so this code in this repository was part of master's thesis so you can get some you know help on how the person loaded you know the data is probably not shared the network is that one um but it's just the package is there how to compute whatever you can start from there as well okay so um I'm, I think this one, if it comes to so this, is basically what's also listed in there. Uh, uh, so, this paper. So, this paper is probably the same as what I relate here. Okay. So, anyways, so that's, I hope you understand the data if you have question. And uh, then the ask is, of course, to use not only just work only for this, not only EDA, but actually a lot more is you are a data engineer. So your part is about managing the data. So the difference between data scientist, data engineer, analytics engineer, machine learning engineer is that where their interest lies, you know, how they are hired for, what are they hired for? A data engineer is hired to manage data. Of course, they have to understand sometimes the data to really you know, provide something. As a, without understanding, you, you, they might not do it much. So they have to understand, but they, their role is to really be able to build pipelines such that downstream users like analytics engineers, machine learning engineers, data scientists, and all or analysts to be able to use it efficiently. So that's you are wearing that hat of data engineer in the beginning, one role. The second role is analytics engineer. Analytics engineer is really so it's between analytics and then data engineering that's what they're called and they are the users transformers they create lots of transformations so that analysts can you know analysts who don't understand many of these tools python codes coding analytics engineer fill that gap they basically interface between data engineers who really much more manage data to analysts who are actually supposed to build dashboards business intelligence um, insights so you are also wearing the hat of um, analytics engineer, okay? So for that reason, you are going to need DBT and Redash and then Airflow for managing, basically, uh, scheduling things. Because when the data comes in, if you imagine every day the drones are kind of sending, so there has to be like event-based or <clears throat> time-based. <clears throat> um, so event-based means when data is loaded into somewhere, then DBT picks up that event, and uh, uh, not DBT, sorry, Airflow <clears throat> picks up that that event. Data is available, and then it goes and extracts and that data and and you know pushes it, loads it into a data warehouse, and then it starts the next step, which DBT to perform and and uh, dashboards to be updated. But Redash, the nice thing about it is that once you have the dashboard, it actually can automatically, based on the time also you set, it can refresh. That's the part. So, you know, all of that integration between, you know, in the data engineering and analytics engineering is your, your, your part now. And Redash is for your dashboarding and basically providing. And that Redash, you can use it more for about the data. So dashboard comes either in business intelligence, which means to answer business questions, or also dashboard for the data engineers to actually learn about their pipelines. Are they working? Which one failed? That's also a dashboard. So Redash actually can connect to many databases, including the logs, and it will be able to show you, for example, which pipeline failed, which pipeline didn't fail, which DBT 
part is working and, and not. So this basically provides that. Okay. Everything is uh, listed there. So <clears throat> it's like before. The instructions this time, we don't give it like as detailed as before, but it's already sufficient in my opinion. But of course you can ask and we get more, you know, you get more help. But basically the work, the tech stack is a data warehouse. Postgres, you can, if you are, if you want, you can use also MySQL, but I assume that because last time you used Postgres, it's easier for you now. Uh, an orchestration service, Airflow, an ALT tool, DBT, and a reporting environment, Redash. So this is your tech stack. And of course, you should be able to deploy them once you work on your local environment to deploy them in the cloud. And the easiest way is to de de dockerize everything. Okay. And the tasks you need to create. So for each task, that means you have to create subtasks, right? So these are basically the headers of the last time we have created for you very subtasks. Again, you can ask, but how to do that? You can sub subtask that one. Every if each of these tasks, you create subtasks, right? So that you can actually, how do you achieve, you know, this is, you can consider it as a goal. How do you achieve this goal? And, you know, by doing X, Y, Z, and those are your subtasks. So the first part is, to create DAG, DAG is basically um, uh, um, just in, in Airflow, this is one part where you actually schedule. A, a DAG do everything. It's a Python code. It can be an SQL query. It can be, you know, just some API call. It's just basically in Python, you write your entire thing. In, in that DAG, you might include, you know, launching the entire cloud and closing it. You know, it doesn't matter what what it contains but of course you break the dag into se series of work such that you maintain um, part so you know so you create dags that th they are basically the the in the graph so this is basically a direct uh, um uh, a cyclic graph so means just airflow manages different tasks as a as a graph so that means as a tree and kind of one follows the other and stuff that's what's called the scheduling or you know maintaining that and then you connect. Uh, so basically, you use Python or Bash. So you first is you create operators or you load you, uh, operators. Um, they are plugins. So Python plugin, Bash plugin. If you want to use others in the future, you you have those plugins for for them. You connect and you write just how to write uh, that because that part is easy, independent. It's just a scheduler. So you know it doesn't matter whether you finished setting up your database, your DBT. It doesn't matter. Just you, you can start airflow, setting up your airflow because this is just your uh, management uh, orchestration. So of course, over time you should think about how you know how how you can decouple the different ducks into production, dev, and staging, and um, and then of course after that you should be. This is order. You don't have to follow this order. You can create your yours, but this may help uh, earlier. Um, yeah, yeah, ask me the orders. So this can give you a certain order. And Airflow is independent of everything. That's why you can set up, you can start there. And then connect for, to connect your DBT, of course, you have to have your uh, data warehouse, in this case, Postgres. Um, and then you, you then start adding, you know, connecting DBT with your Postgres uh, database, right? And then again, basically, um, this can be connected, the, the different DBT runs can be operated or controlled by the DAG that you created in Airflow, right? And then the other part is, of course, you should be learning a little bit of, so the focus is on DBT because we are using ELT and, you know, it, it's what, it, it's DBT that actually created or revolutionized this part of ELT. So it's about creating different transformations uh, on to, you know, um, based on the, the data warehouse so that for that reason the uh, two tasks are all about uh, dbt then the fourth part is then you start creating dashboards using redash so again a redash you can set it up earlier as well so it's like the order of setting up you can connect them any because until you connect uh, database redash is also another tool that you basically have to run setup and maybe your computer might not run all of them and that reason you can just you know you can decouple them or uh, connect the two things differently so that means redash also runs 
and then it will give you a front end. It has a front end. You connect with that front end, and you start creating. Um, uh, you start creating basically dashboards. To create dashboards, you have to write SQLs that imports data and visualization that uses that data and visualizes them, and then what is called a dashboard that connects different of these plots into one dashboard. Okay, so there will be tutorials, and you know, you it's it's not that complex, but it's of course for when you are new, it's, it's it looks so much, and definitely it is, but it's not under it's doable. So we think it's doable, and then basically write a short article about your approach and what was the most important decision along the way. So basically, you communicate your work. Okay, so and when you do for this different tech stack, consider Airflow. If you want to use templates in Airflow, what is good way to manage metadata and variables within your DAGs? Read about context. Automated alerting, what happens if the DAG is failing, a Slack or email alert, how to connect. You don't have to do that for this one, but of course, if you can, that's great, but you don't have to. And then also, um, for example, if uh, some of the DBT fails because of some reason, you know, to not update on based on failed transformation, so that means it's called hard circuit break uh, in that part. So with an airflow, you can think, consider them that. With a DBT, automate the generation of DBT docs and make it available. So this is basically, again, it's a one-line code when you know it, and now it means a lot, but DBT allows you, once you write DBT um, uh, files, you basically automate just creating uh, docs are basically from that is very easy. And then also explore macros means like when you write dbt uh, script, you can use actually some mac macros from environment variables and that, so that's part. And then automate the dbt to Airflow connection by uh, automatically creating DAGs out of dbt metadata. So you can look at this one as well, okay? Read dash and the fourth component in the tech stack, I mean, or maybe the third component in the tech stack is Again, think about how to provide. I mean, when you know it, it's easier. Think about how how to actually um, use macros as well. So like variables that control the entire uh, the SQL query and the data fetching, uh, as well as also, you know, we chose Redash because Redash, you can actually, your entire dashboard, unlike Microsoft BI or Tableau or any other one, you can actually Git version that because it's a very, very modular um, uh, tool. So, okay, that is the case. And then in the tutorials, so this is basically just today now described, but I will later talk about Kedro, Data Vault, Star Schema, database normalizations, a little bit more high level. Over the week, you will have more, but this is much more on data models this afternoon. And then tomorrow, there will be on uh, Airflow in the morning by Mahalit. And then analytics engineering using DBT by uh, Emit Nan. And then on Wednesday, we'll learn more about Kedro data layers and data lake house, uh, an external uh, an Alimunai. Deborah would uh, give that one. And then building dashboards using Redash. Abel, and again, another batch for Alimunai will, work, uh, will give you that. And then on Thursday, they will be using DBT, Tableau, Looker, Microsoft BI, like one of them. I mean, he just uh, to build BI dashboard. By EUL, again, another batch for um, Almunai. And then conversation with the data engineering team of, in this case, Adludio. So that would be led by Nabil and his team. Um, and then another on Friday, there will be AWS Cloud ecosystem for data engineering. Again, that would be uh, led by Nabil and his team, as well as conversation with the data engineer will continue on the afternoon with another team that is led by Nabiyu, who is actually based in Ethiopia, uh, the company called Kafiya. So they also have a big data engineering team that they built using Ten Academy graduates. So you also ask what, which of these tools are they using, in which way, and they will show you, and you can ask them in actual real impact based on the lessons they let, you know, based on the exercise assignment they have done here, they built they used, I think, all of them in every data engineering. You use much of this. Redash, we use extensively. DBT, they use extensively in, for example, in Adobe OPI, and uh, as well as also uh, databases. In, in their case, they use, of course, more extensive data. Lakehouse using uh, AWS uh, S3 
and then using Athena for, for that. But they use ultimately uh, Postgres and um, MySQL type or data, databases actually to manage their data marts. That means for a certain business. Uh, so they will you will have conversation with them. Okay. So let me stop there. And if there are questions, I can answer. And how you feel also. Uh, Mercedes, so Mercedes asked to choose one location or to work on all locations, up to you. If you can do all of them, ultimately you set up a pipeline and you are, you know, then adding things will be easier and you realize that may be easy. But for now, to, if your computer is, doesn't have that much RAM and you want to really work, you can use one location. It's fine. Any other, is there any open source cloud? There are, you should check. I think there are, um, but they might not give you much. But I think there are, I think I, I forgot them. We will try to share that. We will also search for that. Yeah, in in the future, sometimes we, we provide you cloud access, not for this one, because this one is doable on a local laptop. But um, yeah, that's a good question. And Alexander, I choose the button you click, but empty file. Um, no, like, I mean, which one? So, so if this is the one that you're talking about, I'm also sharing it here. Which MPCSV is that? Is that on the traffic data? Okay, let's let's check it. So. So, so I choose one, one date, and one date here, and I have, and then I download. Okay, now I open the file. Okay, you can't see it, but I will. Um what is the file 13 bytes yeah that's true it seems empty data set so please yeah Beba. we can see yeah. your screen please could no, you share it no 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 i understand because i i didn't share it seems yeah it's empty so interesting i will um i think you can download the data in total as gzip so that's probably easier so I mean, you see that I, I click the download. For some reason, it's slower today. My So, okay, it's just coming here. But if I do all drones, then I think it's going to be so. So maybe it's just the, the part. So let's just check this one. This one will download zip. It has finished. Oh, CSV only as well. Yeah, okay. So it seems this one is also empty. Okay, so we will share then the data. I think we have it downloaded at some point. So thanks, uh, whoever asked that question. It seems they have stopped providing it, or at least something has happened in their system. So we will we will share the data. Okay. Um, okay, so I mean the, the difference is just it might it's a, a, a two things like I think ELT, ETL, you know, the terminology is basically they are all it means just extract load transform or extract transform load. But it doesn't make sense when you actually think of it as one thing that you do. No, it's every piece you do, it's either how you think, right? It's a framework. So that means for example, you are extracting data from Facebook, 
like for one user. So do you do like, because these things are a loop. That means they from what is source and what is sync. That means load extract starts from a source. So, and then load ends in a, in a sync. So that's basically now what is for you a, a source and for the other person is, a, for example, for Facebook, that part of for you, that is going to be where you extract. Actually, that's their load, that where they are loading things, right? So it's connected. If you think of it, even in one team, even when you do, there will be ELT as a chain. So think of it ELT or ETL as a chain. So it's a, it's a framework of how you think, okay? So for the confusion sometimes is that, do I do my analysis first? Transformation means analysis, right? You're transforming data. Or do I just load it without that much transformation? And then I do load transformation on top of that database. Of course, in the past, that was not possible because databases were very expensive, okay? So then now databases are not that expensive. They got very high speed. Querying databases is not anymore as much expensive. Therefore, ELT is over, you know, kind of in the modern sense, ELT is becoming because then you don't have to otherwise in ETL sense, you, you develop, you transform it for one case, for example, for sales, and then you transform it and then load it to another table, for example, for marketing. And then even within sales, different versions, you transform it and then version one, you load it to the different table. So that's part, you really are doing transformation for every case that comes, but in in ELT sense, no, you do transformation when you are required. So today somebody asks you to give you data in this form, you give them. Tomorrow you give you, they ask you for that, you only write script, right? You don't really load the data, that one. Maybe they, that person can save it in their database, but you don't have to, okay? Does that make sense, Biniam? Great, okay. So Eshatu, you have a question? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I wonder uh, to ask you about the EDA before loading our data to the database. Can we do that or we need to do that? It's called data understanding. So, you know, if you remember on this uh, crisp DM, so there was data understanding and then there was also uh, data, what was understanding and then cleaning or transforming. I, I forgot the actual terminology, but it's still about EDA, data exploration and data understanding. And so the re the difference comes here now. Of course, data understanding involves some form of EDA, but the goal is to understand the data itself, you know? Um, while, so that means, you know, what is its structure? You know, what are the missing ones? So you're much more as a data engineer, data understanding is as a data engineer. So you, you still do EDA, but in the form of to understand what is the data, what is it missing? How should, what kind of model should I use for my data warehouse? Should I use star schema type? You know, should I use data vault where I load everything there and, and then I transform it? Of course, here we give you something guideline on that, but that part of data understanding still is part of EDA. But you know, your goal is different. In that EDA, it's to understand data such that you can store it efficiently, you can use efficient, you know, uh, relevant framework. Then there is EDA, then as a business intelligence or as an analyst, as well as also as, let's say, data scientist. That one is more to answer question, the business question, right? So that part, that EDA for now, we are only asking you that when you build dashboard. So that dashboard using, um, you know, uh, Redash is, then there, you do you write your transformation using uh, DBT. So of course you do on, on a Jupyter notebook, whatever. But then finally, your understanding you write them in DBT. Okay, does that make sense, Jatu? Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? I think the the one that is shared seems good. I'm gonna also um, edit the. Add it into the data. So, okay.
so you have it there as well any question any so it's it's the old um yofta so the old so in the past where there was only databases that's called database <clears throat> data warehouse came because everybody was using database but in the modern time when you make that database efficient so that it can be, it can respond for example postgres now is very more efficient than before even mysql and others so when you build a database the same database people know but make it more efficient it become data warehouse now there are the known data warehouses in the technology and you know things are for example google um, um big query that is a data warehouse the only difference it's a database but it's probably built out of some postgres type of data but they make it very efficient so one plot for example is nice is the different in modern times you know what you are i'm going to share also this reference so this is how before there was only one dms you know a database management system but now when you build that database into in such a way that it's massive parallel engine <clears throat> that doesn't cost much you know the cost is small because memory is small you know whatever so that becomes the same database become data warehouse in that sense okay so it's just a more efficient version of uh, data database to a modern world where you can add lots you know where you, you you have big data to handle and lots of queries that becomes data warehouse i hope that is clear okay great during deployment of our dashboard that we have database functionality it's not working Uh, I don't understand the question. So the, in this case, when you deploy your dashboard, uh, actually, it's going to be local. We are going to only ask you um, a screenshot. So in this case, but for the previous week, I understand what you mean. So our dashboard that I've done is not uh, using GitHub to store my data. Do you know other platform which is more efficient with database functionality for deploying systems online? I'm sure there are just like open uh, servers open you know free servers to host your website there are also free database um, places you can look for but that becomes yeah like Nuriye, that's we will you will have also database that is uh, online in one of the projects that you work actually in that way. but i understand the concert but in our in this case you're going to be using all in your local part of course um then that becomes easier like and, and then you present to us um on monday just i think we will ask that presentation a few ideal you know those who finish nicely and want to present will will present as well their dashboard their redash to the you know to all of us so I, i'm not sure if i answer your question but there might be i i don't know but there might be also free databases you can load data <clears throat> which you can use um, in your deployment. Does that answer, or at least is that in the same line as your question? OK, great. OK, are we in the same page? Is anyone confused, um, you know? Or are we all, OK, great, we understand. We have a working understanding of the document. Now, next is the fun part. I see lots of hands. I like these hands. So wonderful. Wonderful. Happy um, data engineering and analytics engineering season or week. OK. Thank you. Uh, if that is the case, uh, I think Rudolf was asking. Very huge, several gigabytes. We try to provide with with we simplify and provide as well. Just uh, give us time. We'll simplify that part, that piece as well. But thanks otherwise, and um, yeah, let's meet in Slack then. Okay, so you can stop the academy team. Please stop the recording.